بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على موثي رحمة العالمين نبينا وحبيبنا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد اليوم الرابع من شهر الله المحرم ألف وأربعمائة واثنان وأربعون الموافق ل اثنين وعشرون واحد وعشرون من شهر سبتمبر 2020 uh, uh, we are going to start a new uh, dars which uh, is very important uh, in the life of uh, a Muslim and uh, by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we will manage to finish uh, with an important book uh, written by Ibn Abdul Qawi uh, talking about Adab and those of you who maintain this uh, dars and they were patient until the end of it you have seen how much benefit that book contains and uh, we almost covered most of the things or the vast majority of the things that people are dealing with when it comes to the tarbiyah matters so today inshallah we are going to engage in another uh, one which is uh, which is uh, a book written by a great scholar Ibn Al-Qayyim and uh, this man is one of the the ayat min ayat Allah Azza wa Jalla fi Al-Kawl and uh, uh, he lived in the 8th I guess 7th uh, century that was the time he was born he was born in the year if I'm not mistaken uh, 691 691 Al Hijri. That was the year he was born, and uh, his name was Muhammad ibn uh, Abi Bakr. Uh, Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr uh, ibn Qayyim al Jawziyah. Uh, his father was uh, the Qayyim, the caretaker of the madrasa called Al Jawziyah. That's why they call him Ibn Qayyim al Jawziyah. So uh, we just take this uh, kunya. Uh, to be uh, the one we will be using inshallah throughout our class and uh, he is known with this name and he, most of us do not know Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr uh, ibn Ayyub we just know ibn Qayyim uh, al Jawziya or ibn al Qayyim uh, both are okay and uh, uh, he lived with uh, Sheikh Lusam bin Taymiyyah he met him uh, if I'm not mistaken in the year uh, 712 I guess and Lazama uh, Shaykh, he was with him until the time uh, Ibn Taymiyyah died, went back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he studied uh, from childhood and he was uh, grown up from that house of knowledge. And uh, as I said, he was one of the ayam in Ayatullah Azzawajal. Very excellent when it comes to fiqh and hadith and seerah and language, you know, and tafsir. So many things, you know, and when it comes to uh, medicine, you know, and when it comes to psychology, uh, this man is one of the most excellent people you will ever uh, see in your life. Uh, like Ibn Rajab, uh, Ibn al Jawzi, you know, those ones they talk and they focus on the heart. He also did in many of his works, one of them is this uh, book that we will be uh, studying, which is Waddawa. That what dawa means uh, disease and the cure. Disease and the cure. That's the meaning of adda what dawa. So it is one of the most excellent compilation written by Ibn al Qayyim. One of the most excellent compilation written by Ibn al Qayyim. This is the book of adda uh, what dawa. So inshallah, we'll be de dealing with this book, bi ta'ala. And generally, this book deals with the heart. It is going to be talking about the reason why he is compiling the book. And uh, also he will deal with the issues that a Muslim needs to fix his heart and also to make life easy for him on earth. He will deal with realities. So as I said, uh, it is one of the most excellent uh, compilations and the books that a Muslim need to know, especially in this contemporary time that we are living, we are living in. People are a bit uh, far from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need uh, compilations like this. We need compilations like this. So, uh, inshallah, we'll go through the book, be it in Allah Ta'ala, until the end of it, as we always do. And uh, I have an advice for all of us. Please do exercise patience. 
this book we have only two days for it uh, today and I guess uh, Thursday yeah if I'm not mistaken these are the two days we're going to be having the book so today and then you have two days to take break and to breathe and then uh, after two days then we come back to continue with our mission so knowledge needs patience you know without knowledge uh, without patience you will never achieve your goals so I really urge each and every one of us to exercise as much as uh, 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 patience we can you know and dedication is needed exercise patience and uh, observe dedication strong dedication and uh, have strong interest in the in the class and this is what you should be doing actually whenever you have uh, uh, what do you call lessons like this you know exercise patience and do not skip a class you know, this is my advice for all of us because wallahi my brothers and sisters and we're too far Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran shagalatna amwalana wa ahluna fastaghfir lana you know that was the excuse given by some uh, people when they don't want to follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam it is true yes shagalatum amwalahum wa ahluhum they were busy with their wealth and their family uh, nowadays the family also don't have our time you know we, don't, we have no time for the family and it's just about shagalatna amwalana we are busy with our own dunya. So don't forget we are here for the sake of uh, worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the main objective and the purpose of life. To serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to worship Him so that we can go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and get the best with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I really advise each and every one of us to remember this mission. You know, And how much does this lesson, I don't know about other lessons that you, have attend, you are attending, but how much is it taking from you? One hour? One and a half hours, and that's it. Even if it's two hours out of 24 hours, it's not that that much. So do remember that a kalima, one word that you learn, which is bringing you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is far greater than this wall and whatsoever in it. Write this down if you wish. But I mean my word. A word that you will learn about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is far greater than dunya and whatsoever in it. There will be no uh, something that is equal to it in this life, completely. So have this in mind. Do understand that this is uh, what you call uh, something that will help you to uh, be in Allah Taala, make your journey to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala simple and easy. Something that will help you to make the journey between you and Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala uh, simple and easy. So since the main objective of our life is to serve Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And it doesn't mean that your life should be all about this, you know. Your life should be all about ibadah. No. You can turn your life into an act of worship if you wish, according to the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. But Islam never asks you to go and stay in the masajid and don't go and do some other things. No, your family have right, right on you. Your body has right on you. You go and do exercise. You live with other people. But in whatever you're doing in, in this life, you should make sure that you're doing it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In whatever you're doing in this life, you should make sure that you're doing it for, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. This is how a Muslim can turn his uh, life completely, you know, uh, an act of worship if he wishes. Get it? You do, you observe the ibadat, and also when it comes to dealing with others, deal with them in the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants, and then your life will be all about active worship. You know, everything you do, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will count it for you, and you will be rewarded by that. So, uh, before I begin, I just want you to have this in mind, that this book is going to help you to create an excellent relationship between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the subject matter of the book. It is going to help you to create an excellent relationship between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if somebody asks you, what does this book is going to uh, be all about? It is going to help you to live as a good Muslim in this life and also to create an excellent relationship between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To live a good life, to have success in this life and also to succeed in the hereafter when you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the main subject of the book and this is what we'll be dealing with with insha'Allah. So as I said, the class will begin insha'Allah today. I was uh, a bit busy trying to learn how to use uh, uh, the, the, the camera I was given by the Shabab. Uh, so the next time insha'Allah we will begin on time, right after, uh, after 5. You know, At 5 exactly the class will begin. So if we can begin on time, we can finish within an hour and then we open the session for question and answers insha'Allah 
ta'ala, bi'idhnillah ta'ala. And uh, whenever you have questions, please do write it down. And Abdul Rahman will pick up the question. The questions, answering questions will come after the class, bi'idhnillah ta'ala. So for those of you who are not uh, in a hurry, so do stay with us because sometimes things that we forgot to cover during the lesson, somebody's going to ask a question about that, then uh, khalas, we'll cover them during the question and answer. So it is very important to make sure that you, are, you uh, uh, I mean, be patient and wait until the end of the lessons. And this is also part of the adab in, uh, in learning. So that's uh, it, I think. Uh, uh, this is more than enough as an introduction uh, uh, to uh, uh, learning the book. So now, inshallah, we begin. So I will read the text and then I will interpret it, just like what I used to do with uh, the Mandumat al-Adab and some other books that we have learned, inshallah. Okay, يقول المؤلف رحمه الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم This is Nusakh, any one of the student, his student or somebody who is copying But they are telling us now at the beginning the reason why he is writing the book and then they will move forward The reason why he wrote the book which is an answer to a question somebody asked him So let's listen to the uh, question first which will make it easy for us to understand what the book is going to be dealing, dealing with قال بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This one has been interpreted, translated so many, so many dardurus, so I don't need to go through it again, inshallah. I mean, we seek help and support from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there's a very good beginning. And this is what Surah Al Fatiha is all about that excellent uh, surah uh, that Muslims are not paying attention that much to, to its meaning. But it will talk about this also inshallah this surah al-fatiha some part of it will be mentioned here by by ibn qayyim so he says wabihi nasta'in mean allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says iyyaka na'budu iyyaka nasta'in you alone we worship and we seek protection of and the help and the support of nobody except you allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so there's a very great ayah iyyaka na'budu iyyaka nasta'in he himself the muallif he compiled a book which is about three volumes talking about this ayah so the source of support and sustenance and aid is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you cannot get help from anyone except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the only one that can help you is Allah somebody might say but my friend helped me my father helped my mother helped yeah it is true but you have to understand that the one who is giving them ability to help you is is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Wallahi, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to withdraw the support from those people who are supporting your life, you will never be supported in this life. So actually, he is the one who is giving the ability and the power to everyone to exist here, you know, to everyone to exist here and to be able to cooperate. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Surah Al-Anfal. He says, وَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِهِمْ لو أنفقت ما في الأرض جميعا ما ألفت بين قلوبهم ولكن الله ألف بينهم. Allah سبحانه وتعالى says he is the one who did the تألف بين قلوب المؤمنين. تألف بين القلوب means to bring the heart together, make people come come in together, bring them closer to each other, loving each other, not hating each other. You know, removing the rancor and the enmity in the heart of people. You know, bringing them closer. You know, making them loving each other. Allah سبحانه وتعالى says he is the one who did that. And subhanallah, if you look at the lives of the Arabs in those days that Allah SWT is speaking about in this ayah, you know, they live, you know, they lived 121 years of battles and fighting each other. You know, did you hear that properly? 121 day, uh, uh, years of fighting each other. Subhanallah, 121 years. They're fighting each other for 121 years. Where was that? Because somebody was killed and there was no authority to take action. You know, they kept on living in a state of chaos. Islam came and united them. You know, they never went back to that tragedy up to date. They're almost going to go back because of the influence of some of the, the enemies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected them. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who brings their heart. Nobody thought it was easy for the heart to be brought back again. They used to be brothers, they used to be friends, but then they were cut off into pieces, you know. Nobody thought they were able to come back, but Allah SWT did it. And how long? It doesn't take time. Allah says, لو أنفقت ما في الأرض جميعا ما ألفت بين قلوبهم ولكن الله ألف بينهم. 
if you are to spend what is on earth completely in order to bring the heart, you know, you want to spell the, spend the wealth, you know, the money, the, the dunya, all of it to bring heart closer to each other, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَا أَلَّفْتَ بَيْنَ قُلُبِهِمْ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ أَلَّفَ بَيْنَهُمْ You can never be able to do so. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the power and the capacity and the ability to do that. So who is doing the ta'leef is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's why I said this is a very important ayah. I wish we have time to, to, to go deeper. You know, it takes days for us to reach the, 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 the peak of lessons that are contained in this ayah. إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُوا إِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِيمُ it's a very excellent lesson Allah SWT has given us, which Ibn al-Qayyim did an excellent job in many of his books when it comes to the interpretation of this ayah. So he says, wa bihi nasta'in. Yaqulu al-Nasikh, you know, the one who is copying the book, he said, su'il al-Shaykh al-Imam al-Lama al-Mutqin al-Hafid al-Naqid Shamsu al-Din Abu Abdullah Muhammad ibn al-Shaykh Taqiyya al-Din Abi Bakr al-Ma'ruf بابن القيم الجوزية بابن القيم أو بابن القيم الجوزية زاره الله من فضله. he said the sheikh علامة علامة this is when you reach the peak of knowledge you know that's beyond professorship in Islam you know you have the professorship in other things علامة beyond professorship you know those are so great you know scholars when a person reach this 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 title علامة this is beyond the professorship. And you know what professorship nowadays means, you know, a professor sometimes cannot do things which he is, you know, a professor in them, you know, sometimes. But in those days when a person reached this level, what he called al-allama, you know, al-mutqin, somebody who perfectly memorized and remembered that which he learned from his scholars. You know, when the person reached reach the level of its khani, knowledge, there's the perfection of it, you know, the excellency, you know. That, 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 that these are the people that when they speak you'll be wondering any, uh, which computer is better than them in terms of remembering that which they learned our scholars used to be like that a person can just sit down and take a pen you know and compile a book within a few moments you know because knowledge is there in the heart one of the scholars when they burned his books you know Ibn Hazm when they burned his books you know he took his pen you know he said Look at these guys. They thought my knowledge is in the book, you know. He wrote another one. <laughs> he wrote another one, you know. Because the knowledge is already in the heart. Imam Shafi says, my knowledge is always in my heart. Either wherever I go, it goes with me. If I'm in the market, it is in the market. If I'm at home, it isn't. Nowadays, our knowledge is what? You know, books. And these are the best ones. Other than that, we learned and forgot. We learned and forgot. Seriousness is not there, you know. In the past, they were not like that. You know, they really believe in what they do, and they're really dedicated to the knowledge. That's why they became who, who they are. We sleep a lot, they sleep a bit. We focus so much on the details which are unnecessary. They focused on the principles and maxims, you know, criteria. You know. These are the focus of the, past, the previous nation. And our focus is so much detail, falsify, and all of these things, you know, at the end of the day, we, the conclusion is what? Zero. You know. They are very productive. The production when it comes to our life is very little, if it does exist in some instances. So this is Al-Mutqin Al-Hafid. Al-Hafid, they also use this title to address somebody who is very strong in his memorization. Remember, here's something, they got it. Those people, they are not busy. They have, they, have, they have less sins, you know. And subhanAllah, that's why this book is very important. Wallahi, it's very important, this book. You know, the sins of the qawm, you know, the previous uh, nation, their sins is not that much, you know. It's very little in comparison to our sins. And that's why the heart is clean. The capacity in the brain to memorize things is very strong, extraordinarily strong. Sometimes if we did not see it in the book, being written by people that we can trust, we will never agree with that, you know. To tell you that a person memorized the whole book within a short period of time, you know. Whatever he reads, it will just get stuck. Like the computer, whatever you put inside, it keeps it. These, these are the code, you know. Why these are the people, you know. But as I said, one of the key to succeed in this memorization is to reduce the sins you're committing. 
especially the sins a person is committing with the eyes because eyes has a strong connection to the heart. You know, somebody was doing it in an excellent way, saying to you, look into this uh, connection between the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, asking the brothers, sisters and the brothers to lower their gaze, you know. And look at the link in the connection in the same surah, in the same surah, not very long actually, the second page, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the nur, Allah nur al-samawati wal ard. The source of light for the heavens and the earth is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the scholars was saying, look at the connection, because there is a strong connection between the heart, uh, the heart and the, the eye. Whatever you see, if it is wrong, it is going to, uh, it's going to put something, you know, some, some paint, you know, black paint on your heart. And that will blind you from seeing the truth. You know, you will not see the truth easily and you will not understand it properly. Allah says, When the heart reached this level, it will be very difficult for a person to understand things. Imam Shafi said, Shakautu ila waki'in su'a hibdi, fa'arshadani ila tarki al-ma'asi, wa qala alam bi anna al-ilma nurun, wa nuru Allahi la yuhda li'asi. He says, Imam Shafi said, I have complained to my Sheikh al-waki'a, waki'a ibn al-jarrah, al-kufi, al-ru'asi, al-hafiz, you know, al-mutqin, al-muhaddith, you know. A very strong scholar in, in terms of hadith and a very dedicated person to the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to teach Imam Shafi. Imam Shafi said, I have complained, you know, I complained to him. He complained to him. What was the complaint? He said, I told him that I am facing difficulties when it comes to memorization. My memorization is, is now a bit tough. I am finding it so difficult for me to memorize. It wasn't easy as it used to be before. And Imam Waki says, uh, you have to monitor your activities, you know. He said, try, reduce the sins you're committing, repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he told him, Shafi, Muhammad, you have to know that knowledge is light. You know, light from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot be given to a sinner. Subhanallah. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But this is a strong message to all student of knowledge, wallahi, that is a bait which those of you who are with us in the last part of the dars of Manzumat al-Adab, he says what? فَكُنْ حِلْسَ بَيْتٍ فَهُوَ سِتْرٌ لِعَوْرَةٍ وَحِلْزُ الْفَتَعَ عَنْ كُلِّ غَاوٍ وَمُفْسِدِ He asks you to uh, remain in your position. You know, don't go out if you don't need to go out. Because especially nowadays, if in, our, in their time, they were advising you to remain in your house. If you don't need to go out, don't go out. What do you think about our time? So as a student of knowledge, your library should be your second home, if not your first home. If you can turn your house to be a library, that's good. Those of you who are using the devices, you know, make your device, make your device your best friends. Instead of chatting here and there, here and there, download some books. You know, nowadays almost every book is online. Download some books and read. Download the lectures and, and read them. You know, if you get bored, then go and talk to the friends. And who should be your friend? The best ones. You know, those people who are like you in stu uh, studying the knowledge, or at least some people who will not misguide you. Even if you talk about the dunya, you laugh, but you will not be with uh, people who will misguide you. That's a very good way suggested by of life, suggested by the scholars. And naqid, and naqid, there's criticism. What he meant by that is, this Ibn al-Qayyim is one of the people, when they read something, they read it qira'a al naqida Critically. Critically means, I mean, uh, you, 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 blind, you, you, you blind your eyes from seeing the author, except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But when it comes to others, it blinds his eyes from seeing the author. He just focuses on what is written. So when there is criticism, he will criticize the text itself. SubhanAllah, this is tariqah to salaf, you know, the methodology used by the salaf of salah. Nowadays, we criticize what? We are criticizing the personality. That's why we don't succeed. And the enmity and the hatred in us is so strong, you know. In those days, they don't see the one who is speaking. They see the, the, the thing that was spoken by that person, whoever he is. If it is correct, they approve it. If it is wrong, they reject it. 
They don't mind about who is talking, who said it, who doesn't say it. As long as it is correct, that's the truth. And that's what the wisdom says. Al-hikmatu dallatul mu'min anna wajadaha akhadaha. Wisdom is a missing property of a believer. Wherever he gets it, he takes it. That's how we're supposed to live nowadays, you know. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam talked about shaitan. When shaitan suggested to Abu Huraira to recite Ayat al-Kursi, when he goes to sleep, he said, Sadaqa ka huwa kadhu. The Prophet ﷺ asked Abu Huraira to trust the shaitan in that regard. Shaitan told Abu Huraira, read Ayat al-Kursi when you go to sleep. Is that true? Yes. The Prophet ﷺ did not say, no, 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 don't take from him. He says, no, it was true what he said. But he himself is a liar. By nature, he's a liar. But today, he spoke the truth. And the Prophet ﷺ asked him to, to go with it. So when you hear the truth, you should take it. Even if it is from an enemy, as long as it is the truth, throw him away, but just focus on what has been spoken. And remember this word of the scholars, الْحَقُّ لَا يُعْرَفُ بِالْرِّجَالِ وَإِنَّمَا يُعْرَفُ الْحَقُّ بِ وَإِنَّمَا يُعْرَفُ الْرِّجَالُ بِالْحَقِّ They said, الْحَقُّ لَا يُعْرَفُ بِالْرِّجَالِ You don't recognize the truth because of the person who is saying it. That is happening only with Rasulullah ﷺ and the rest of the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's all you want. You recognize the truth because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say it. You recognize the truth because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa say it. But after that, you recognize people because they are speaking the truth, which is based on what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said and what the Prophet what the Prophet said. Don't you ever connect your life with somebody in which you don't take the truth except from him. That's very wrong. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks you to be select, very selective, choose the best one. Those people whom you can trust and take the truth from them. But don't say the truth can only come from this person. Other than this person, there will be no truth. This is very wrong and very dangerous also as well. Because if this person whom you take in this way died, what happens to the truth then? That means the truth is what? It's gone. And it's very dangerous. Very dangerous. Very dangerous. So when the person says something, ask him to prove it. If he can prove it through the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what does that mean? That means we should what? We should take it from him. So this is Ibn Qayyim, Shams al-Din. This is his laqab. They call him Shams al-Din. Uh, Abu Abdullah, this is his kunya. You know, the father of Abdullah. Muhammad ibn Sheikh Taqiyu din Abi Bakr. That was his father. Al-Ma'roof ibn Qayyim al-Jawziyah. So as I said, Ibn Qayyim al-Jawziyah. Qayyim al-Jawziyah, this is his father. Because the father used to take care of the madrasa called al-Jawziyah. So Ibn Qayyim, ibn Qayyim al-Jawziyah. The son of the Qayyim al Jawziya. Okay. So somebody asked him. He said, Zadahullah min fadhmi. Allah is going to increase his virtues, his fadl on, on, on Ibn al Qayyim. Somebody asked him, Ma taqul al Sadat al Ulama, a imma tu dini, radi Allahu anhum ajmain, fi rajulin ubtiya bibali, ubtiliya bibaliyati. Wa alima annaha in istamarat bihi afsarat alayhi dunya hu ukhra. Subhanallah. Somebody asked him, he said, what is the fatwa given by the scholars, the, the shiyukh, the people of fatwa, you know? What is the fatwa? So somebody was asking Ibn Qayyim, what is the fatwa given by the scholars? He means he's speaking about Ibn Qayyim. Fi rajulun, concerning the person who is tested by Allah SWT with a test. And this person reached a level in which he is afraid if this test is to be continuous, he might lose his dunya and the akhirah. min shaitan rajim it's a very good and excellent question. We need to ask this question, you know. The test, you know, that might end up by you losing the dunya and the akhirah. You know, there are some people that Allah SWT described them because of their, their state of, they, they've been in this, uh, I mean, in the state of, in the state of lost, Allah SWT says, khasira dunya wal akhirah. SubhanAllah. Lost the dunya and lost the akhirah. And wallahi, Ibn al-Qayyim in this book, if I'm not mistaken, because I I have read the book long ago. But if I'm not mistaken, in this book, he's going to give you examples of people who lost the dunya and the akhirah. You know, who lost the dunya and the akhirah. You know, they, I mean my word, they lost the dunya and the akhirah. That was a person who converted into Christianity and he died after two weeks, if I'm not mistaken. He converted to Christianity to get what? To get married to one of the Christian. He did not get that woman and he lost his religion. 
he converted into Christianity for him to get it. And subhanAllah, he fell down from the roof and died. Lost the religion and lost the dunya also. He was looking for the dunya. He did not get that dunya. And he also, he, he lost the life. You know. So we have to be very careful. Repentance is important. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. But a person shouldn't be deceived by this in a way you will end up committing sins with no paying attention to. You know, thinking that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Ghafoor Rahim and then you engage in sins. There are people who are doing that. Can you believe in that? You know, there are people who are committing sins constantly. Why is that? Because they said Allahu Ghafoorun Rahim. And they were right in that statement. But they forgot. Also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Huwa Shadijul Mihal. Shadijul Mihal is the one that whenever he destroyed and take somebody, erase that, he will erase that person. They will become part of the history. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِذِنْ بَعْثَ أَشْقَاهَا فَقَالَ لَهُمْ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ نَاقَةَ اللَّهِ وَسُقُوْيَهَا فَكَذَّبُهُ فَعَقَرُوهَا فَدَمْدَمْ عَلَيْهِمْ رَبُّهُمْ بِذَنْ بِهِمْ فَسَوَّاهَا وَلَا يَخَفْعُ قُبَحَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He destroyed them completely. You know, dam dama, you know, it's a very strong word. One of our scholars said, even if you don't know Ar the Arabic language, when you hear the word dam dama, you know there is no good in it. And those people were erased completely from existence. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know what he says? I don't care. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he doesn't care. Wala khafu uqubaha. Why was that? If you go to the history and look at their attitude, you will say they deserve more than that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. That's why they do not get more than this. SubhanAllah. So don't forget this. We have to maintain the balance, you know. Don't just, don't just say Allah SWT is Ghafoor Rahim. It is true. But you have to remember that he is also Shadid al -Aqab. In Surah Ibrahim, Allah SWT says, Nabbi ibadi, anni ana al Ghafoor Rahim, wa anna adabi huwa al-adab al-alim. Tell my slaves and my servant, I am the one who forgives. And nobody forgives like Allah SWT. The best form of forgiveness is the one you see from Allah SWT. I will tell you something to give you very good news. You know, those of us who are engaged in sins and you think you are too far from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no, my brothers and sisters, wallah, you can come back at any moment you wish. You know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says? He says, if one of you is to commit the sins, is, is to commit sins, which is like the size of the sand, you know, go to the, not, don't go to the desert. That's one is, is too far. Just go out of your house and pick up one hand of sand and try to count, you know. Believe me, you will never be able to count them. Just take one half of sand and try to count every single particle in it and see if you can do that. Imagine somebody who is coming with the sin like the size of the sand, you know. How many sins you have? Infinity number of sins. Only Allah SWT can tell you. And you know what Allah SWT says? If you are to repent and to go back to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, on the day of judgment, I will meet you with the same amount of those sins of maghfirah. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Wallahi, you will never find like Islam. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, al ghafur huwa al ghafur rahim that's the ultimate truth. You know? Imagine somebody who is like this, and when he meets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him, I'm going to meet you with the same amount of uh, uh, maghfirah. You know, you know, you know, this is not the, 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 the end of it. Allah's matter, if you're repentant, is sincere. Allah's matter is going to replace the positions of the sins with rewards. SubhanAllah. If he has one billion of sins before, and now he repents. The moment he repents, when he meets Allah's matter, as long as he kept his repentance, did not change his mind and go back to the same sin. When he meets Allah's matter, he is going to meet Allah with the same amount of maghfirah. And also at the same time, he will meet Allah's matter with the same amount of rewards being given to him apart from those, the, the, those he had. Allahu Akbar. Allah, tell me, which religion, which religion has this in it? No religion on earth can tell you this. And this is a great motivation for each and every one of us to come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not to be lazy, you know. And at any moment, you're welcome. With Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will never be late. With Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will never be late. And always have husnul dhan billahi azza wa jal. Don't you ever have su'u dhan billah. Always has, have husnul dhan billah azza wa jal. 
So he said, what do you say? What would you say to a person who is tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the test that he's afraid of losing his religion and the dunya because of it? Okay. This person says, this, this person who is tested, tested, he tried his best, you know. He uses every methodology to make sure that, you know, he stopped this test from coming to him, you know. To make a stop, to put a stop to this test, but unfortunately, it kept on increasing. And definitely, this man is tested. He said he tries his best to, to stop it, but unfortunately, it kept on coming from time to time. So he asked, he said, what would you say about this person? What should be what should be what should, what, what should be the advice for this person? He says, what would be the what should I do? Hila means the trick, but yeah, he means what should I do? You know, what should I do to remove this and to stop it? You know. And what should I do to to, to understand the best way for me to, to remove this this te test? فَرَحِمَ اللَّهُ مَنْ أَعَانَ مُبْتَلًا Allah Akbar, you know. The guy is really tested, he says, and I ask Allah SWT to show mercy upon anyone who support and help somebody who is tested by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. He said, I ask Allah SWT to support anyone. So he's telling, telling the Shaykh, Shaykh, I ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala to shower you with his maghfira because of you helping me in this. Wallahu fi awn al-abdi ma kan al-awd fi awna, ma kan al-abd fi awna akhi. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah SWT is always in the support of a person who is always in the support of uh, his brothers and sisters. The more you support others, the more Allah SWT supports you. Abtuna ma'jureen, rahimakumullah. He says, please give us the fatwa on this matter. May Allah SWT show mercy upon you. So this is the question that Ibn Qayyim was asked. And based on this, Ibn Qayyim wrote the following. And the whole book was to answer that question, you know. The whole book was to answer that question. And you can see the size of the book, you know. Around here, how many pages I have here. Uh, I have around uh, 347 pages. That's to answer that question, which is not even, a ha even half of a page, you know. فَكَتَبَ الشَّيْخُ Alhamdulillah. Amma ba'd. So Ibn Qayyim he wrote, Alhamdulillah. Amma ba'd. To begin with, فَقَدْ ثَبَتَ فِي صَحِيهِ الْبُخَارِ مِنْ حَدِيثِ أَبِي هُرَرَ You know, that's, that's the best thing about being an Islamic uh, you know, Muslim psychologist. You know, you learn the Sharia, you learn the Adab, you learn the Aqidah. So your answer to the one who is questioning you is supposed to be sourced from what? from the divinely given revelation because the solution is there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَتَطْمَئِنُّ قُلُوبُهُمْ بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ أَلَا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَطْمَئِنُّ قُلُوبُ Those who believe and their heart find no way to be, to be tranquil except through the remembrance of Allah and you should know only through the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do hearts find tranquility. So he began his adv advice with what? With the revelation. You know. He said, ثَبَتَ فِي صَحِيهِ الْبُخَارِ it is one of the narration that are, that is that are found in Sahih al Bukhari, in Hadith Abi Huraira, Hadith that is narrated by Abu Huraira, and the Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he said, "Ma anzal Allahu da'an illa anzal lahu shifa." Allah subhanahu wa taala has never sent down a disease except that He sent along with it shifa for it. There was no disease sent by Allah subhanahu wa taala except that there is a shifa for it. Subhanallah. Why does the very excellent and good news for this Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then you can understand how much false is the claim by some of the scientists, you know, and medical doctors when they tell you that there is no cure for this disease. That's a joke. Allah SWT never sent down a disease without sending the cure to that disease. Any disease, you hear people saying that there is no cure for this disease, this is wrong statement. Wallahi, this is a very wrong statement. The Prophet sallallahu said, Alimahu man alimahu, the one who knows it, knows it, and the one who is ignorant is ignorant. Your ignorant doesn't mean it doesn't exist. You know, if I don't know something, it doesn't mean somebody else doesn't know. You know. And don't forget, my brothers and sisters, nowadays you shouldn't deceive yourself. 
you shouldn't deceive yourself. You should understand that medicine becomes what? A big business nowadays on the earth. So even to give you the correct medication is not easy. And now we are living in this strong battle of who is the first person to discover the medicine and the cure. So it's a very big battle, you know. You might have the medicine for something. You know, this age that the people are troubled with, you know, this age that people are troubled with, you know, many times people discover the medicine for it. Research done by the scientists, you know. But since that is a business, you know, done by somebody, so it is not easy for them to accept those conclusions. So we have to be, we have to be very careful on this, on this matter. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us, the, I mean, tawfiq in this life. So, ma anzal Allah da'an, illa anzal Allah shifa'an. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has never sent down a disease without sending along with it the cure for it. Or fi sahihi Muslim. So this hadith is authentic, narrated by Abu Huraira, found in sahihi al-Bukhari. Or fi sahihi Muslim, in the sahih Muslim, min hadith Jabir ibn Abdullah, from the hadith of Jabir ibn Abdullah, qala qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, li kulli da'in dawha. فَإِذَا أُصِيبَ دَوَاءُ الدَّاءِ بَرَأَ بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said لِكُلِّ دَاءٍ دَوَاء Every disease has a dawa, has a cure for it. Every disease has a cure for it. And when you have the, the, the correct medicine, you know, which you put on the disease, that person will get, when you use the correct medicine, that's the meaning of usiba dawa, uh, dawa'u ad-dawa. You know, when you use the correct medicine to address the disease, that person will be cured by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because you have to know that the one who is the khaliq sabab wal musabab, the one who creates the disease and the cure for that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want that cure to be effective, it will never happen. That's why you might see sometimes a person will be using, you know, sometimes a person will be using a medicine and you also use the same thing, you know. He got cured and you're still suffering from it. That's qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Although the norm is when you use the medicine, you know, in light ta'ala, you get the effect of that medicine. But sometimes it happens that you might use it, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want it to be effective. So that you will remain dependent on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout your life. Because it is wrong for you to believe that the cure exists in the medicine. If Allah wants to wish, He will not make it a medicine. Actually, He will make it in the negative way. But He is the most merciful. He doesn't do that. He lets you get the benefit. But He wants you all the time to understand the fact that He is the one who is making things effective. If He doesn't want, He will never make it effective. That's why we found in this, in this life... Things that are used to kill other people. You know, they told us, you know, I never witnessed this myself, but they told us there was a person who was given a poison to die. You know, when uh, those people in the uh, other countries, you know, where they agree with this uh, mercy killing, you know, uh, which is against the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the family will sign an agreement for the family member to be killed. You know. That person was just receiving that poison or disease to die. And that was the cure. Believe it or not, according to the story, that was the remedy for his, for his, uh, what do you call, uh, for his, uh, for his problem. You know, I watch, uh, and I read the news of uh, a person, a boy. I saw a lot of patches on his head. You know, there's so many stitches. You know, they said the family just signed an agreement for his life to be taken away. You know, they're tired of taking care of him. At last moment, got him back. Allah SWT got him back, you know, so that you will remain dependent on Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. These medicines, they are just what the causes, you know. They are just what uh, the cause. You know. Allah SWT is the one who is making them effective. They are just a means Allah SWT asks you to to use. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala sent down angels to support the believers during the battle of uh, Badr. He says, "Wa ma jaalahu Allahu illa bushara lakum, wa li tatma inna bihi qulubukum, wa man nasr illa min indi Allah." Allah says, informing you about angels coming to support you in this battle, this is just to give you a good news and also to strengthen your sight and your heart, to make you a bit stronger when you meet your enemies. But you should know that having angels in your side is not the one that can guarantee you a success in this battle. 
the victory comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is how a believer should believe in whatsoever you do. So in look for the medicine, you should understand that you should intensify your dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it effective. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has his own way to make it effective. قال وفي مسند الإمام أحمد من حديث أسامة بن شريك عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال إن الله لم ينزل داء إلا أنزل له شفاء علمه من علمه وجهله من جهله إن المسند في إمام أحمد from the hadith of Usama ibn Sharik the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said Allah swt has never sent down a disease إلا أنزل له شفاء without sending along with it the cure Allah swt has sent down the disease and the cure together at the same time. Alimahu man alimahu wa jahilahu man jahilahu. The one who knows it, alhamdulillah, he knows it. And the one who is ignorant, his ignorant doesn't mean somebody else doesn't know. Okay. So we call this person ignorant, but that is somebody who, who knows it. Wa fi lafzin, inna Allah lam yada' da'an illa wada' lahu shifa'an aw dawa'an illa da'an wahidan qalu ya Rasulullah ma huwa qala al-haramu. In another narration, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has never sent down a disease without sending along with it the cure or the one, the medicine for that. Illa da'an wahidan, except one disease. They ask him, Ya Rasulullah, what is that disease that doesn't have a cure? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, Al-Haram. Al-Haram means the old age. Old age, there is no way for you to bring the younger life back, you know. There are some people who are making some attempts. They go and do some plastic surgery. We're not here to discuss that, whether it is halal or not. We're not here to talk about that. But there are some people who are wasting their time to go and bring this shabab back. You know, I call it a waste of time. When you age, just live a natural person. Don't disturb your life. And bringing things which are unnatural to your life might be harmful. You know, we have heard cases whereby some people after that surgery, they die. And that, that doesn't stop death. And doesn't give you a not long life, you know. It doesn't give you a long life. Nothing can increase your life. Except that which is mentioned by the Prophet ﷺ. Some people might think that if you live in a place, or if you eat certain food, you will have a long life. Or if you do this, you have a long life. No, it is not like that. Life has been fixed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there will be no change. Except when a person do the Salat al-Rahim, and even this one, it is based on the second Qadr. We will talk about this, inshallah, in the future. It is based on the second Qadr. But Allah has written everything that is going to happen on earth, you know, or in the heavens, or in the earth, or wherever, you know, that exists, you know, which we don't know. Allah SWT has written about everything 50,000 years before the creation of the universe. And nothing will change. Nothing will change. So what happens, you know, they tell us if you go to Japan, you know, they, yeah, people in Japan, they live longer than everyone. And why do they live longer than everyone? Because they eat this, they drink this in the morning, they do this and that, you know. Let you do it here. Let you do it in Africa, Asia, or uh, whatever you're doing. Do, do the same system. You will die at the same time. Allah wants to prescribe for you. You know, we have heard our scholars dead the least in terms of eating. You know, this food is disease. In most instances, that's why you don't take a lot. Eat it in the way the Prophet ﷺ described for you. When you need it, eat it and don't eat a lot. Because it might turn into something else which is not good for you. When you put it inside your body, the, 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 the nutritive faculty that exists in, the, in that food, which we don't know exactly what is that, that means there is something which benefits and there is something which doesn't benefit. That's why you use the bathroom sometimes. If it is beneficial, all of it, then uh, you will not need the bathroom at all. In paradise, because it is beneficial, all of it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the ability to keep everything in you. And there is a way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you want to take it out, but you don't need a bathroom in that place. You know? So the Salaf al-Salih, they are the least in terms of eating. They are the m most moderate people in terms of eating. But many of them, they don't age. The Prophet sallallahu if you're talking about the best way of eating is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa how long did he live? 63 years old. And he went back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But there is a bit better way to say it. You know, I hear all of these things, I laugh, you know. And people think that, yes, the reason why you live longer, it is because of this. No, that's a lie. The reason why you live longer, it is because the Qadr says you're going to live up to this moment. And wallahi, if your time is not yet, you might live in a state of difficulty, but you have to live and survive until that moment. They told us about some people who are under the, 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 the building, you know. 
under the building after the, the, the earthquake, you know, for many hours. Everyone died, but this one doesn't die because his time is not yet, you know. Little tiny baby at the age of two years, everyone died in an aeroplane crash. She survived because this is not her time. So what happened to those people and what, how should it put it, you know? We can just say in the best way, eat good, eat healthy food, because it is always better for you to live and to die peacefully than dying in a tragedy. You know, you eat the bad thing, you go to the hospital, you live a very bad life, you know, and die. That is not good for you. It is always better for you to eat healthy food. So even if death comes, death comes after you enjoying a very good life on earth. Not like you disturbing your life and you went, uh, I mean, to live in this, in this dunya in a state of difficulty and then death will come and meet you at the same time. That's why you will never find a hadith to my knowledge telling you live in this place or eat, eat this one so that you can live longer. Rasulullah so advised you to eat so that you can maintain what? Your health. And this is the most important thing. And this is how we should uh, be thinking about, about it. So, Al-Haram, there is no cure for this. There is no way for you to cure the old age. When you reach the old age, there is no way for you to cure this one. Khalas, you're already old, old. And in that, just start doing istighfar and being good in your life. You know. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us good and put barakah in those old ones who are among us uh, in this platform. Whoever reach 50 years old, 60 years old, that's khalas. That's the time for a person to come back to his consciousness. Actually, it doesn't mean that if you are a younger person, you should be lazy, you should do whatever you want. No, you should, the one, you should be the one who will be more serious than the old one. Because you don't know what your life is going to be. Now you can take the lesson from the old ones. Okay? They have the old age. They are in the old age. They cannot do everything. You, know? you should take lesson that you might end up being in this stage. What will be your situation? So we take lesson from them. They said, as saidu man wa'idha bi ghayrihi. In this life, Allah SWT grant you a lot of examples so that you can take them as, 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 as a lesson for you. Qala Tirmidhi, hadha hadithun sahihun. And uh, Imam Tirmidhi says this is a, a very authentic hadith. It's an authentic hadith. Wa hadha ya'ummu adawa ul qalbi wa ruhi wa al badani وأدويتها وقد جعل النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم الجهل داء وجعل دواءه سؤال العلماء ابن القيم says this hadith and the rest of the hadith that we have just mentioned they, they include every they, 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 they deal with every single disease that exists whether this disease is affecting the heart or this disease is affecting the body this is not just the hadith that is talking about the diseases that, talk, that affect the body no, it talks about any type of disease, whether it is affecting the body or it is affecting uh, what you call the heart. Or it is affecting the soul, or it is affecting the heart, and also it speaks about every single medicine that somebody will, will be looking for. And the Prophet made ignorance and it as a disease. The Prophet called ignorant. Ignorance, disease. And yes, definitely, ignorance is disease. And the worst type of ignorance is the ignorance about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are ignorant of Allah. This is the worst type of ignorance. And you can see if you're ignorant, even between you and your family members, you will keep on having clash with them. If you're ignorant of your friend, you will keep on having clash with him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us good. وَجَعَلَ دَوَاءَهُ سُؤَالِ الْعُلَمَاءِ So ignorance is a disease. And the remedy and the medicine for the ignorance, because every disease has a medicine. So what is the medicine for the ignorance? Asking the scholars. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Let me make it for you in this, in the, let, put it for you in this way to understand how excellent and how beautiful is Islam, you know. Islam, everything Islam could be divided into three. Into three categories, you know. Halal, haram, and doubtful matters. Okay? Halal, you're supposed to follow the halal throughout your life. Whatever is halal, no restriction. Eat what you want, dress what you want, don't exaggerate, don't go into extravagance, you know, 
but you have a right to wear what you want, dress in the way you want, as long as it is halal for you to dress in that way. Just restrict yourself to the Sharia, but anything that is halal, nobody should tell you don't do this. As long as it is halal, this is halal. لا تحرموا طيبات ما حل الله لكم. Allah SWT says, do not engage in making impermissible the fresh things and the good thing that Allah SWT created and make it legal for you. So the first category is the halal. This is where the believer is supposed to be. The second category is the haram. This is where Allah SWT doesn't want to see you at all. And the third category is the doubtful matters. And it's SubhanAllah, nowadays we follow the doubtful matters, especially when it comes to the business. And we got many scholars, many so-called scholars, you know, and speakers and researchers who have no background in Islam and speaking about Islam. A'udhu Billah. So we find things which are doubtful, things which are not even doubtful, but they're haram, but we make them halal. And we find our people, they're looking for nothing except what makes life easy to, for them, you know. If you are to say that this is haram, because we have evidence to say that it's haram, you are not amongst those people who are wanted by others. People want to hear from you, yes, 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 everything is yes. Otherwise, they will ra radicalize your view and the way you think. So that's why you see our life, no barakah in our life. Wallahi, look at the depression that is in this life nowadays. You know, people are in a state of tension, you know, psychological problems, you know. And it is increasing, it is not going down. Why is that? Because we are at war with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't want anything except what we think will make our life easy. You want an easy life? You should contact Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and see what easy life means. Because He's the one who created the life and created death and created everyone who is in between these two things. And for sure, with no doubt, nobody will tell you about what fix the life more than the one who created the life. So you want a good life, let Allah SWT choose you what good life is all about. Wallahi, you will never regret in your life. But if Allah SWT lets you choose by yourself, you will end up choosing something which is wrong. You know, that is a parable. I don't know whether some of you got it or not, but there is a parable mentioned about somebody who uh, met a shepherd at night and he asked him to help him with one sheep. And this is night, the place is dark. And the, the, the shepherd knows where the sheep are and what sheep is all about. You know, he's looking for sheep. So what is the best way for him to get the best one? Ask him to choose for you. Let the shepherd choose for you the best one, you know. That uh, companion of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about a slave, he said, Ya Rasulullah, you promised to give me a slave. And I heard that you have some. Ya Rasulullah, I'm here to take my promise. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Yes, I have two of them. He says, choose one of them. The man says, Ya Rasulullah, choose for me, subhanAllah. That's the smart way of choosing. That's the reason why I said, let Islam choose for you. And he succeeded. He said, Ya Rasulullah, choose for me. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, al musasharu mu'taman. The one who is consulted for an advice, you know, he is amin. He has to talk in the way he believes to be the correct approach. He said, I'm now, I mean, he said, هذا فإني رأيته يصلي. He said, take this one because I have seen him praying. The story is a bit long. You already know the story. But what I needed from this story is the fact that the companion told the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, choose for me. So this man did not want the shepherd to choose for him. He was so greedy, he wanted to choose by himself. What happened to him? And this is night. He cannot see the sheep. He really needed the sheep. So what happened to him? They said, فَاخْتَارَ you know, فَذَهَبَ اِخْتَارُ لِنَبْ بِنَبْسِهِ So he went and took it and took it by himself. What did he get? فَاخْتَارَ كَلْبَ الْغَنَمْ He ended up taking the dog, you know. <laughs> In the morning when he, he took it and he, discussed, he checked to see, what did he take by the way? He found out he ended up, instead of sheep, he got what? Dog, you know. This is our life. We don't want Allah to choose for us. What is better for us? That's why you end up choosing the wrong choice, making the wrong choice. And you suffer throughout your life. And subhanAllah, when you suffer a lot, where do you go? You go back to the one who asked you to trust him from the first place and you did not. But now you have no option. You go back to who? To him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But don't worry, my brothers and sisters. Wallahi, don't worry. 
if I tell you, okay, inshallah, I will never do that. But as human beings, if you tell, if, if somebody tells you, don't do this, and you went and do it, and then you get into trouble, when you come back to them, what would they say? Yeah, yesterday I told you, don't do that. And you refuse to obey. And now you get into trouble, you come back to me looking for help. No, I will never go and look for somebody else. Many people are like that. But you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you, do this. Don't do this, do this, don't do this, do this, don't do this. I just want you to feel how much merciful is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you get into trouble because you do not take his advice, tomorrow if you go back to him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell you, welcome. This is what you should do. Subhanallah, subhanallah, subhanallah. You Allah, so that you can understand why is this person the best, I mean the worst loser. Somebody who doesn't have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his heart. You Allah, if you're sincere and you're serious in your life, just to remember that Allah SWT is with the believers and you have Allah to go back to Him whenever you need. Wallahi, it is more than enough to bring peace, you know, in your heart. It is more than enough. If you're serious in your life and you know who is Allah, just to remember that Allah is always there waiting for you to ask. This is more than enough to bring peace and tranquility in the heart. And when you ask Him with this type of heart, he will accept. You know, Allah once told somebody, he says, my slave knows that he has, some, he has a law that always listen and accept the repentance. That's why he always come back to me. Let him do whatever he wants. I forgive his sins. Who can do that? Only Allah can do it. So this is what this book is going to be doing to teach you about Allah and how important is uh, you fixing the relationship between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he says, وَقَدْ جَعَلَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَمَ الْجَهَلَ دَاءً وَجَعَلَ دَوَاءَهُ شِفَاءَ الْعُلَمَاء So I was talking about the three, uh, deen is being uh, divided into three categories. Halal, you, you have to restrict yourself to the halal. And haram, you have to stay away from the haram. And the last one is a doubtful matter, confusing matters. This is where we focus. We just go. Now we go even with the haram, we don't care. So you have the doubtful matters. What should you do with the doubtful matters? You ask the scholars. Because there is somebody who knows the correct ruling. Matters are doubtful. Matters are, that are doubtful, these are the matters that you are not clear. Whether they are halal or haram, you are not sure. Okay. Whether they are halal or haram, you are not sure. These are the doubtful matters. What must you do in them? You should ask. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَسَأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Ask the people of knowledge, if you have no knowledge. Always ask the people who know, if you don't know. Ask those who know, if you don't, if you don't know. Very simple religion. Halal, you do it. Haram, you stay away from it. What you have doubt in it, call somebody who is a scholar. I mean, a scholar. Somebody who has the knowledge and also he has the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can trust him. You know, because there are scholars, but they cannot be trusted. I am telling you the truth. There are scholars, people who know and they have great knowledge. But unfortunately, they are the scholars of the dunya. Unfortunately, they are the scholars of, of the dunya. Dunya is controlling their fatwas. You, know. you give them money, they give you the fatwa according to what you want. That's why our financial system nowadays, the so-called Islamic financial system, this is what those who do not fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do. Pump them with the money and they can give the fatwa according to what they want. You know, that's why a person should always see a dunya as a means. This life, you're here to please the last matter. We're not here to stay. Some people, they collected the dunya. They have it and they die. Last time I, I told you about, about somebody who, who, who built a house. He called it Darul Khuld. Did you hear that? He built a house, a castle. You know, he called it Darul Khuld. The house of eternity. That means no death for him after that. And what happened after, after this? When he get inside the house, he died instantly. So that house is Darul what? Darul Maut. You know? <laughs> well, but this is, this is a very good example that Allah SWT has given us in this life. You have a purpose, brothers and sisters. You know? There is a poet, uh, uh, poetry mentioned by some of them. وَكَمْ مِنْ مَلِكٍ رُفِعَتْ لَهُ عَلَامَاتِ You will like this one. وَكَمْ مِنْ مَلِكٍ رُفِعَتْ لَهُ عَلَامَاتِ فَلَمَّا عَلَى مَاتِ like alamat, but 
You know, he has, they build the castles for him, you know, to be on top of everyone. When he reached the peak of it, Mat, he died. This is one of the examples here. So a person should remember this. And the scholars, they are the most deserving people to remember this fact that we are not here to stay. And they are giving fatwa on behalf of Allah. Ibn Qayyim wrote a book, he called it I'lam al muwaqqi'in al rabbil alameen. Or I'lam al muwaqqi'in al rabbil alameen. Either the book is going to tell you about those people who sign on behalf of Allah SWT, these are the scholars. It's like they sign an agreement between them and Allah SWT to speak the truth and they will never compromise the truth. That was the agreement between them and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and on the day of judgment, they will be brought by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to be questioned about how did they give the fatwa, what exactly they tell people. That's why, Wallahi, being a scholar is not easy. You know, it's very sensitive matter, very sensitive matter. Very easy, a person can go to hell. You know, when he doesn't give the fatwa correctly in the way Allah Subhanahu wa Taala wants him to do. Imagine Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is going to bring a person on the day of judgment and ask you about every single thing you have told others. So now you collected the dunya, and at the end of the day, you're going to leave the dunya for who? For your children. If they're not even righteous, they're going to use it in a wrong way. So you got the dunya in the wrong way. You sold your religion to get the dunya, and you leave it for the children who are not righteous. They're going to do evil things with that dunya, and it will keep on coming to you inside your grave. So student of knowledge, we have to be very careful. You have to understand that the reason why we exist is to serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we are not meant to stay here forever. Soon, we will be taken back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, deen is divided into three categories. Halal, haram, and doubtful matters. Halal, you do it. Haram, you stay away from it. Doubtful matters, you are supposed to call the scholars and ask them. The scholars said, if you make ijtihad, and you are not among the people of ijtihad, you are not qualified to do ijtihad, you will be sinning, even if you do it correctly. Listen to this, my brothers and sisters. If you make ijtihad on a doubtful matter where you're not supposed to make that ijtihad, but you don't go and call the scholars and ask them, you do ijtihad. Even if you're right in that ijtihad, you will still get the sin. Because Allah says, Is alu dhikr in kuntum la ta'lamun. You refused to follow the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the possibility of you making it in the wrong way is very high. We have to be clear about this. Religion is not something to joke with. Allah, religion of Allah SWT is not something to joke with. It's a serious matter. Something that Jibreel has to calm down here the earth to tell the Prophet Wasallam and look at the way even he is coming down. He doesn't come down alone. You know that? Jibreel is more than enough to chase away all of those shayateen and devils, you know. And the Afarit, he is all, he is more than enough. But Allah SWT says, عَالِمُ الْغَيْبِ فَلَا يُثِيرُ عَلَى غَيْبِ أَحَدًا إِلَّا مَنْ لِتَضَى مِنْ رَسُولٍ فَإِنَّهُ يَسْلُكُ مِنْ بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ وَمِنْ خَلْفِهِ رَصَدًا You know when he comes, Jibreel alayhi salam, he comes along with him with angels, you know, guards protecting him, you know. Allah SWT says, so that the message will be delivered properly and will increase the yaqeen of the receiver, you know. That's how Jibreel is coming, you know. Something, you know, which is just a word Allah SWT told them to, to be revealed because the success of the people on earth you know, on earth, and uh, every creation of Allah SWT lies in it. So it's a serious matter. You shouldn't take it lightly. But unfortunately, nowadays, religion is not one of the sensitive things. Dunya is very sensitive. I don't want to compromise my dunya, but I can compromise all of my deen. A'udhu billah. What kind of choice is this? And as I said, that's why our life have no barakah except a little nowadays. We're depressed, but we don't know why. The solution is... We have to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we have to understand the question of this person and listen to the answer given by the scholars. Okay, that's uh, all for today. So he, uh, Ibn al-Qayyim after this, uh, you remember he said, uh, al-jahl is, uh, ignorance is also a disease. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa made it a disease and he told us that the cure for the disease is asking the scholars. So after this, Ibn al-Qayyim is going to quote hadith, you know, a story which is authenticated by some scholars. It is authentic, inshallah. The least you can say about it is uh, the Hassan. Uh, this story shows that definitely ignorance is the disease. And how dangerous is to give fatwa without knowledge. You know, Because when you give fatwa without knowledge, you might kill yourself and you might kill the one whom you are giving the fatwa to. May Allah SWT grant us good. So I will stop here, inshallah, to move to question and answers. May Allah SWT uh, grant you good and success in life. Abdurrahman, Ilaik. 
Let me in. Me yuck. Okay. Uh, uh, so Uh, dunya matters, purely dunya matters. Uh, this one, you ask the one who is qualified, the most qualified person. You know, uh, in, the, in the religious matters, when I say religious matters, I include also the spiritual matters, matters of psychology, you know, things, thinking, you know, people are in a state of depression. This one, you should look for a Muslim psychologist, not just a Muslim psychologist, and if that word is correct, an Islamic psychology no a psychologist uh, if that word is correct you should look for somebody who combined both because this is the one that you can trust because these matters they are related to your life with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way or the other but when it comes to the purely dunya things you know dunya dunya things this one you look if there is a non-muslim who is better in that regard because you don't need that much of trust you know you don't need that much much of trust you can just go on and ask him and that will be okay, be in light to Allah. But any matter that is so spiritual and matter that is religious matter, you don't go and ask other than the Muslims. So you should swim in the Muslims and choose the best among them and ask because this is where the trust lies. They understand you, they understand what is the requirement by Allah's matter and they know how to advise you properly. Yes, Abdurrahman. Uh, the from your sins, and uh, Allah accepts their repentance. Uh, will the sin always be turned into good deeds? Yeah, when a person fixes his, uh, I mean, uh, his life, yeah? when he fixes his life and he repents sincerely according to the conditions of repentance, uh, the sins Allah SWT says, Yubaddilullahu sayyatihim hasanat. The sins are going to be replaced with the good deeds. Not the sins themselves, they will be turned into good deed, but their position will be replaced with the good deed. That's mean, if he has 1,000 sins, Allah SWT will give him 1,000 rewards. One of the scholars was explaining that. He said, because if he repented, repented Tawbat and Nasuha, every single sin he used to do will be addressed by a single repentance. And every repentance carry a, sing, carry a reward. You know, so if you have 1,000 sins, so when you say, Ya Allah, forgive all of my sins, it's like you are saying, Ya Allah, forgive my sins, Ya Allah, forgive my sins 1,000 times. And each one, each one of them has a reward to address it. You know, that's, that's what happens, inshallah. As long as a person repents sincerely, be in light, Allah, those sins will be turned into, into righteous deed. The position of the sin will be turned into righteous deed. Yeah, only the Ahl al-Dhikr. When it comes to religious matters, only Ahl al-Dhikr can do that. When it comes to religious matters, only Ahl al-Dhikr can do that. And subhanAllah, in the dunya, this is what we do. You don't go to the uh, non, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, Ahl al-Dhikr, you know, and ask him in the dunya matters. We always look for the Ahl al-Dhikr. Religion is more sensitive than that. So you should look for Ahl al-Dhikr, that means the scholars, somebody who is an expert in that field which you are, you are asking about. You should look for this. That's really necessary. Uh, that's, that's, that's the ijtihad on the matters of deen. But there are, there are other type of ijtihad which everyone can do. Let's say you are in a place and you lost the Qibla. You don't know how to find the Qibla. You don't call the Sheikh so and so and so and ask him where is the Qibla. He also doesn't know. You should do an ijtihad to see which direction should you follow. This is also ijtihad uh, uh, called by, I mean, this is also called ijtihad by the scholars. So this ijtihad everyone can do. But we're talking about ijtihad that is based on the knowledge. This one, only the scholars can do that. Since it was narrated that the Prophet would always choose 
Uh, choosing the easy uh, part, Fatima, is uh, matters where Allah SWT is giving you a choice. And you have an option, either to go with this or to do that. Like you are traveling, either to fast or not to fast. And if you fast, it's going to cause you difficulty. The easy way is not to fast. It's a matters like that. But when it comes to controversy among the scholars, we should look for the evidence. This one is saying yes, this one is saying no. We don't look for the easy one, because the easy one might be wrong. And this is what Imam Abu Hanifa was saying, If you follow the consensus or concessions of the scholars, you know, leniencies of the scholars, you might end up losing your religion. And this is a fact. We have uh, witnessed uh, people like that, you know, following that, uh, looking for the easy one. Which one is the easiest one to be followed? The Salaf of Saleh says you might end up losing your religion. So in the matters of controversy, we are supposed to look for the best in terms of evidence. Which one is making the, uh, the uh, um, giving the evidence evident to support his stance? Do you get the idea? So only in a situation, these are rare situations, whereby each and every one of them is mentioned in a very strong and straightforward evidence. Because uh, mentioning the evidence is not just the evidence, no. Evidence that can support the issue. I might be mentioning evidence, I call it evidence, but when you look at it, it doesn't connect to the issue at all. And that person is mentioning something which is directly talking about the issue. To get an idea. So which one shall we follow? We don't follow the easy one. The Prophet says uh, concerning the marriage without wali. He says anyone who arranged the marriage without having the agreement of the wali, this is batil, 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 you know. And the way he mentioned it, Ibn Qudama says there is no Arab person who knows how to speak Arabic can have the understanding of some of the scholars who says that the Prophet is talking about Ahlul Kitab. It's too far, it's too far, too far. It doesn't even link. You will be questioning yourself. How did he manage to make this conclusion? You know, It is too far. So, so when we talk about, uh, uh, I'm sorry, controversies, uh, Fatima, you have, to look for the, you have to look at the evidence first. What kind of evidence this person is using? You know? Is it strong? Is it weak? Then you follow the, the strongest one and the closest one to the truth. Only in a situation whereby you cannot make a preference because each and every one of them is mentioning something very strong, very strong to support his case. You know. And both of them are mentioning something that is very straightforward. You know, in this, in this case, then you go with, the, go with the one that is easy for you. you know. And even in this case, I would not advise you to go with the easy one. I would advise you to go with the one that will put you in the safe side. Get it, Fatima, it's better for you in the eyes of Allah to go with the thing that is put you in the, on the safe side. When there is a confusion, be on the safe side. And this is what the Prophet Sallallahu actually said. He says, فَمَنِ اتَّقَ الشُّبْهَاتِ إِسْتَبَرْ عَلِدِينِهِ وَعِرْدِهِ Whoever stays away from shubha is going to protect his religion. And this shubha is the situation whereby you cannot detect the haram from the, from the halal. You're confused. You ask scholars, each and every one of them is giving you a very strong evidence to support his side, and you don't know which one is correct. So in this case, the best is to stay away from it. And you know, look for the, the, the situation that will put you on the safe side, in which when you go back to Allah's matter, you will not be questioned, why didn't you do this? You know, to get the idea? So that's the best way to make it, inshallah. Yes, Abdul Rahman. So. We have a heart disease such as jealousy or envy or etc. How can we keep having patients with hope until we get rid of that disease? Uh, Inshallah, it's you're talking about the patients. I couldn't get the question properly, but if you are talking about patients, be in light Allah. Be patient with us in this lesson. This is uh, what we will be discussing. Inshallah, patients, patients from the heart disease and any kind of disease which is the test that Allah is testing a person. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Question about Sister Sarah and uh, I've heard about some people saying that the bad calamities happen to the children because of the parents or their great grandparents' ignorance and sense. Is that true? Is that a thing? Yeah, a person might bring a tragedy to his family. Okay. Uh, might bring a tragedy to his family, and so that his accountability will be will be so great in the eyes of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. That's why Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Ittaqufitna tilatusibana aladina zalamu minkum khassa." 
many of the calamities that are taking place nowadays on earth, it is because of pe other people's tragedies, you know. You might not get involved in it, but it affects you. So Allah SWT already mentioned that we have to stay away from fitna and the trial and the calamity that when it comes, it will not just afflict the person who brought it, but it will afflict everyone. So as I said, it's true that the person might bring calamity to his family members, okay, not knowing he's doing that. So that's why a person should quickly repent to Allah SWT and fix his attitude and nothing will happen be the light of it. Uh, no, during the days, there is no problem with that, no, if it is okay, but the problem is at night. Yeah. The problem is at night. The Prophet so I said this calamity that is coming once in a year, it is only applicable to the night, not the day. Uh, this is this is what I said. He is talking about the one that he did not cover in the at, the, at night, right, and in the daytime. Uh, no, if it is the one that he did not cover at night, I would advise him not to use it. You know, out of the fear of that thing exists in it. And that's why a person should be very careful. The Prophet Allah said, if you couldn't find anything, just put a stick. You know, anything you put on it, you put a spoon, and a spoon, a stick, you know. Uh, uh, the brush, you know, the toothbrush, you know, put that one on top of it. And if, if, as long as there is something which is meant to be covering some part of it, that calamity will not go inside. Inshallah. But if it is at night, in the daytime, you left something uncovered in the daytime, if you're not afraid of something, some insects or lizard uh, uh, peeing inside it, and it's okay for you to enjoy your food, be the light out. And Can Aisha, you move there. Always follow the you, yeah. instead of limiting himself to a certain shaykh or a certain matter. Uh, can a person? Always follow Jalpur al-Alama. Uh, no. No, if a person is a... Okay, let me just put it for you in this way, inshallah. You have three types of people in this life. Scholars, student of knowledge, and the layman in society. Scholars, these are the scholars, you already know who they are. Student of knowledge, the serious people who are studying the knowledge, you know, they are almost the scholars and they know how to deal with the nusus. These two categories, they have to follow the text, you know, wherever it is. And they have to follow the correct opinion. There is no way for them to follow something, something other than the correct opinion. Regardless of its affiliation, this madhab, that madhab is okay. But they have to look for the truth from everywhere. The last category is the layman in society. His job is to make ijtihad. Ijtihad in choosing the one whom he trusts in terms of knowledge. And he has to choose somebody who is knowledgeable and also fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has to choose somebody who is knowledgeable and he fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he should look into the community, you know, to see among the scholars who is that person that is recognized by the community as a very knowledgeable person and also somebody who is known to be among that th those one who fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, at least fi dhahir, according to what appears to us, he should take that one whenever he needs. It might be one or two, three, four, five of them, you know, uh, as long as they qualified, whenever he needs something, he goes to one of them and asks him. And whatever this person tells him, he just do it. No need to ask somebody else. Asking somebody else for the, by the layman is wrong. After you ask the first one to ask somebody else, unless if he's the one who sent it to somebody else, but to ask somebody else after you ask the first one is very wrong. Scholars said this is wrong. It is unacceptable for you to do it. And it will increase the doubt. That's why somebody whose attitude is this will never be certain in his worship. Because you're going to be confused. This one tell you this, this one tell you that, this one tell you. You'll always be confused. But if you ask one of them and this person tells you something and you do it according to what he says. You know, if that thing which you're doing is wrong... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not help, hold you accountable of it. The one who told you the fatwa is, is responsible, not you. 
Because you did what Allah asked you to do. Allah says, Ask the people of knowledge, and you already asked somebody who knows. But if the fatwa given to you is wrong, you will not be responsible. The one who gave you the fatwa will be responsible. You can see how easy it is. You know, they will be responsible. You, you will get your reward be idhn Allah ta'ala. Two rewards be idhn Allah ta'ala, or even more than that. But then if it is wrong, the one who gave you the wrong answer will be in trouble. If he knows what he's doing. If he has given you by mistake, he's also not going to be in trouble. So none of you will be in trouble. To get an idea. And if what he says is correct, he get it and you got it also. So that should be the method, inshallah. If you follow it with Allah Ta'ala, your life will be very easy. We have seen this, these people who are chasing the fatwa, ask this, ask that, go to go online. Don't you ever check your 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 I mean don't you ever check the Google or the YouTube when you're looking for a fatwa in the religion. This is my advice to all of you. Whenever you're looking for a fatwa on a matter, don't you ever check Google or anyone. Look for the scholar. The only one who does this is somebody who doesn't have access to the scholars. As long as you can have access to a scholar, go and ask him. Okay? This is the only trusted way. Be in light out. Yes, Abdurrahman. Rahman. Yeah, that is Zayd bin, Thabit, Zayd bin Thabit, you know, the one who uh, was asked by Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu to compile the Quran. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Zayd bin Thabit, ta'allam lughat al-Yahud, fa'inni la a'manuhum ala kitabina. He says, go and learn the, the language of the Jew because I don't trust them concerning our book, you know. He said, I don't trust them. Go and learn their language. I need to know what that is speaking about. And subhanAllah, he mastered the language in two weeks, around 16 days. Knows how to read, knows how to speak, knows how to write, you know. So you read for the Prophet ﷺ, he understand in two weeks, you know. That's what Ulul Himma is all about, high determination, commitment, and worry, you know. And this worry is about Islam. Allah SWT put barakah in what he does, he master it. So to my knowledge, Amina, this is authentic, uh, uh, the part of the seerah. Uh, in the life of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that this uh, person Zayd bin Thabit, uh, Zayd bin, Zayd bin Thabit uh, he mastered the language of the Jew, and he was commanded by the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to do that. Yes, sir. Sheikh, the sister who asked about the children being in trouble because of the parents' negligence. Uh, mm. uh, what can the children do in this case? The parents or the grandparents aren't aware. Uh, they should just be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Problems and calamity can happen, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can easily take it off. They should increase, I mean, their righteousness and make a good relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will take it off. Be in Allah ta'ala. They will not remain like that. You know, because Allah promised the good ones to give them relief, you know, from their calamities. Somebody might bring a tragedy from, I mean, to the family members, but Allah SWT can extract the good ones from it. And those people who agree to stay in the wrong way, they might remain in it for ages. You know. May Allah SWT grant us good. If it is uh, some, some injustice done by the grandparent, they should go and fix it if they can fix it. If they cannot fix it, they just repent to Allah SWT and they ask Allah to forgive their grandparent. But the most important thing for them to uh, uh, I mean, get the relief is to fix their relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to increase it, inshallah. Yeah, a question by Mr. Ahmed. Uh, what are the rights of a kafir female spouse and a Muslim male spouse in seeking divorce? Uh, the same right a Muslim. Uh, uh, Female, uh, Muslim female has, she also has the same right. Uh, to my knowledge, there is no different. When it comes to the divorce, marriage is halal. The way to marry and the way to divorce, the same thing. Whether she is Muslim or she is kafir, the same, the same thing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, fix their marriage and uh, soften their, her heart to accept Islam and to soften his heart to be patient and she also be patient so that they can remain together, inshallah. Yes. 
Uh, that's, he is the one actually. This one, the ayah exactly is fitting him, Tawban. Because any problem that is going to happen is because of that fatwa, he was the cause. If I give the fatwa, I give you fatwa, Tawban, in the wrong way, and I know that this fatwa is wrong, of course I will be saying it. And whatever tragedy t happened based on my fatwa, I will be responsible. Okay, I give you fatwa, you go and do something wrong. I am responsible. I am very responsible in it. And this eye is fitting me, actually. You know, this eye is fitting me. This is my wizard, actually. It's not the wizard of somebody else. This is my wizard, because I'm the cause of that wizard. If I do not give you that fatwa, you will not do it. I'm the one who told you it's okay, and you did. So anything that happens based on that, I will be responsible also. So there is no contradiction for one between this and that. If I give you fatwa, and I know it's wrong, and I, but I gave you that fatwa, and you went and did something wrong, I am also responsible. If a person is a student of knowledge, then he can do it. Ask your mother to come and check it. Okay, so move a bit. Move it. So if a person is a, uh, what do you call, is a student of knowledge, then it's okay for him to check with hundreds of scholars. But we're talking about a layman. Layman, he doesn't he try with that person to understand. Then go to somebody else. When the person tells you the fatwa, ask him first. What does that mean? Make sure you clarify it. Only in a narrow situation where you tried to get it, you couldn't get it. Then look for somebody who can explain it to you more. But these are only rare cases. If you uh, tell that person, uh, the, the one who's giving you the fatwa, they can fix it for you. They can let you understand. So the scholar said only the student of knowledge is the one that is allowed to go around everyone. Other than that, non-student of knowledge, the layman in society, they should just restrict themselves to Somebody whom they trust, and that's it, inshallah. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, as I said, inshallah, this is the first uh, lesson, so please do exercise more patience and uh, ask questions whenever they come. You know, whatever you don't understand, please do ask at the end of the class. I ask Allah SWT to grant you peace of mind. May Allah SWT protect and preserve you wherever you are. Innahu bi kulli jameelin kafeel. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika ashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfirka wa atubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.